Hey guys, Maddie Extreme Auto carrying and camping with you. Gonna do a quick rundown on this one. This is another off grid setup. Um, this one, same thing, a little bit different, uh, but basically the same. Nah. So, um, this one we're going for the Enerdrive 2600 watt inverter running the air conditioner as we speak. It's the Ibis 4 going there. And we've gone for 1100 watts of solar. Um, no, bugger me, I got it wrong. 1150 watts of solar. So the customer had uh, existing 170 watt panels on the roof. So we've rewired those through a Victron solar controller. So three 170s, and then we've gone for four 160s. So that's 1150, if the math's uh, right. And that's uh, the new array. So the uh, 640 watts is going through the Victron 50. And when we've got the uh, Victron 30 to take care of his, um, you know, his existing 510. So, what, 640 plus 510, 1150. Uh, pumping it in, I am running, so it's 130, 130, and the sun's out, it's only the start of spring, but we are right now running this air conditioner off flat out 16. You can see it, I've got it on flat out 16. Uh, the fridge is on. I got a couple of lights on, so fridge is on. And do, 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 what else is on? Just lights. That's it. And we're putting in 680 watts when I just last looked. But I don't know if you can see that, guys. There we have it. So we are we're running on par. That's that's zeroing off every second or two. So what does that mean? Is this this is going flat out, and the solar is keeping up with it? How good is that? Now that's going to cycle off pretty quick. All right, it's it's not super hot today, so that's going to cycle down real quick, and then we'll be back into charge. So we're able to charge and run this at the same time. Happy days. So the rundown: 560 amp hours of power pool lithium down there. Hard to see. All right, down there, and we've gone for the Red Arc 50 amp DC charger with a portable uh, with a side mount and Anderson plug, so we can run portable panels up to 600 odd watts. That's heaps. So 50 is going to come in from the car. Yeah, you know, while he's driving along, that's heaps of charge as well as the solar at the same time, guys. So another fifty. Oh, there we go. She's zeroed off again. We're running. We're running for for free, essentially. We're not using any battery capacity. Um, if he plugged in his car now, fifty amps will be on top of that. He's able to run his air conditioner and pump in energy this time of the year. These setups are wicked. This full off grid setup will allow him to run his microwave, you know, air conditioner, air fryer hair dryer washing machine whatever they want whatever they want on the side of the road all the press of a button so this is the inner drive system the inner drive 2600 watt inverter on this um and i'll show you guys some photos and zoom in on down here in a second and i'll give you the rundown and we put the remotes up here where the factory location is so it's all easy to get to and as i said in um another video that i did separately is this is redundant now all right so no charge sources go through this no mains see it's not plugged in no mains all right no aux in no, no, no vehicle charging is done through this anymore. No solar in, take note of the little spade terminal, nothing. So the three charge sources that this would normally take care of, main solar and auxiliary, are no longer there. It is done by my monstrosity 1100 watts of solar, separate, you know, through the Victron charge controllers, networked together. Um, my Red Arc 50 amp DC charger, 50 from the vehicle and portable as well. And a separate Victron mains charger taking care of it with it's because it's networked, it's got the lithium profile, and that's up there. Batteries are down there. Funny enough, battery factory location, um, you know, that was down the chassis on this. By the time the that charger, the mains charger, went through the wall and all the way down there, it's never really charged properly. It's always best practice to have the charger as close as possible to the battery it is charging. Um, you don't get any voltage drop over the cable. It is reading an accurate, um, you know, indication of what the battery voltage is. And you just get a better charge. That's just the way it should be. The advantage of the Victron system is all of the Victron stuff that I've got fitted down here, guys, is all networked, all right? So everything is networked. All, all three of these items are networked together to the BMV. So you create a mini network. So what that means is all of these three items will work in unison to charge this battery to the best of its ability. And you, it takes care of voltage drops. If there are any you know, millivolts, it'll do it. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but batteries are here, chargers are there. I've got just on a meter away. 
Yes, we run 6BS from these devices, so it's super thick. You never exceed that, um, you know, that limitation there, but uh, the headroom's there for it. But my point is, when the network together, the compensating charge that happens is just next level. It's so much better. So I'll take the lid off and we'll I'll flip this camera around, guys. You can check out the uh, little setup we got going here. So there's the Enerdrive 2600 watt. Move me torch out of the way. No, I won't go over there. Um, we always get asked, why, why do you put this cable tie on, Matt? Like, what's, what's the deal with this? So, for you guys that know and that have inner drive inverters, these IEC plugs wiggle loose like you wouldn't believe. All right, it, all this is, it's, it's not tight, it's just there to hold these in place so they don't wiggle out. And these plug into each other as a bypass. Should the inverter fail for whatever silly reason, this van is completely reverted back to factory by simply plugging these two into each other. And there we have it, guys. So, there's the 30 amp. That's taking care of the existing system. There's the 50 taking care of my new um, 640 watts. So that's um, four 160 watt panels. And there's the Red Arc 50 amp DC charger there. So that's taking care of a side solar input as well as vehicle charging. And we have run the cable for this like we do. So that's six BS running on that all the way through the drill bar to the front of the van. So old mate's able to you know take care of that. And all we have down here, here's all the power pole batteries. So the two 280s here, so the power pole batteries there. And we've relocated everything from outside, guys, and bought it inside on this nice, neat setup. It's all labelled. It's right there in front of you. Here's a couple of cheeky extra blade fuses on top here. Here, the Lippert ESC. Uh, oh, mate, fitted a diesel heater. But these are all the heavy, um, high-current stuff. Main 12-volt fridge. It is a compressor fridge on this. Mains charger. DC charger, solar 30, solar 50. This is easy to see, you know, really easy access. None of this crawling around, you know, what's going on. It's here. All of this stuff has Bluetooth minus, you know, the inner drive and the Red Arc. All of the Victron stuff, you can log onto all of this stuff, as well as the battery monitor up here, completely remotely, anytime when you're ready to go. Cool, but now, so we're inverting here, as you can see. It's on the touch display for the inner drive. Right, orange means inverter and green would be transfer. So that top light will light up green when we're plugged into mains power. Now, this one here has the Swift hot water service. Um, because of the EnerDrive inverter and its ability to not run in overdrive or overload for you know anything over 2600 watts, basically, um, the hot water service electric element on this setup, guys, is before the inverter. What does that mean? That means this switch has zero potential to run from the inverter. As you can see, it's on now. See, electric is on. So if I were to flick the breaker for the mains, the incoming mains, the mains charger, which is down there, and the hot water service will automatically come on and then the transfer will happen. Let's do that live. All right, so I'm gonna hit the breaker, which is just down here. All right, that's on. Mains charger should be on. And you'll see what happens. I'll flip it around. I'll just watch that light flash. So mains is on now, here we go. There it is. You hear that little click and the light goes green. That is the auto transfer switch activation on the inner drive, 2600 watt inverter. It's that quick. Um, I don't know if you've seen that, guys. Check out the charge rate. Oh, beautiful. A little bit of solar there in the mains charger doing some things. It's a nice charge rate we've got going there. So we can warp speed, fill these batteries. If I were to plug old mate's vehicle in, there'd be 50 on top of that. 50, guys. The Red Arcs, we, you know, we're at a caravan park, so there's not really, not much space to reverse in there, but I'm not gonna do it for you today, guys. You've seen it before. Either way, check out that charge rate. Beautiful. Very happy with this solar setup, guys. I'm getting pretty consistent power coming in here. So it's not bad from a, um, you know, 1150 watt system. This time of the year, we are only at the, you know, first couple of days of spring here. And yes, the sun's out. It's just gone 2.30 in the afternoon. Getting 8.50, 8.80. It was sitting on 6.60 for a while, but I believe one of the panels um, might have moved into a bit of um, more sun at a better angle. And that's probably what it would be. The front three panels, sorry, the front two panels are at an angle facing west. So obviously as the sun starts to fall, um, you know, over the course of the day, when it starts to go down in the west there, that's why that number's jumped up. So the front two panels will be getting a little bit more sun, and that's probably going to increase 
um, you know, as the uh, next hour or two goes by. So very happy with this setup, guys. 1150 watts of solar and getting that number, very happy.